Hi everybody, this is Bernadette. Uh, thank you for being here today. Um, we are here from Barcelona. It's a beautiful day and I'm really excited to have this podcast with you today. Um, the, the good news is before I start that the new magazine is out, it's published, it's on the website and I'm very proud of it this time because we have such great brands in that magazine this time and they all have a great story. They all have very nice um, products to show. So go to the website, find our magazine, and of course, read it, share it, and uh, let's show the world. Now, one of the writers in that magazine is Mike J. Michael Golovsky, and um, he is a sales agent for Barnes International Network. He is a luxury travel and yet charter specialist, and he is a luxury real estate consultant. And um, the reason why I think he's so interested, interesting is because this season we talk a lot about investing after Corona. Um, last week or two weeks ago, we talked about trends 2023. I think this is the time to to see these trends and be aware there is a changing world and it's not only changing a lot it's changing quick and so what we try to do is to talk to very interesting successful entrepreneurs who can give you tips or give you his vision and see um, how he is coping with all this changing uh, market. Now, the topic he is discussing in this article in the magazine is portfolio diversity. And uh, I will let him explain personally what it is and what we can learn from it. So um, he's here today. Hi, Michael. Thank you for being here today. How are you? Good. Very good, Bernadette. How are you? I'm fine, actually, and I'm looking really forward to our podcast because, um, as I told the, the listeners today, you know, you are such a good fit in all the topics we had in our podcast the last month. Um, so I'm very happy you're here today. You're making the time to be our guest. Um, so, Michael, one of the things I like to talk to you about and for all the listeners, we we are going to the new uh, magazine this month in October. I'm always very proud of my new magazine. And one of the articles we have there is from Michael. And um, it's it's a very uh, nice magazine uh, article to read. But it gives me also a lot of questions. And one of the statements you make in that article is the the vision you have about business saying don't put all your eggs in one basket so i'm curious where it's coming from and can you tell me a little bit more about that sure well it, it's basically it it speaks to diversification you know you don't okay. want to it, it's an old it's an old saying it's an old adage don't put all of your eggs in one basket i mean all of us in America anyway, grew up being told by our mothers that um, you should not count on any one thing, you know, right. because that one thing may not pan out or it may collapse or, you know, especially my parents lived through the Great Depression in the U.S. And that was very much something they lived by. Don't put all yeah. of your eggs in one basket. Never depend on one bank. Never yeah. depend on one investment. You know, you and that sounds really as wise, to be honest, but um, just for saying, because you are, as you read the article and also uh, how I know you, you are doing wealth management, you are in real estate, you are in business travel, in business um, aviation, um, but you're also in art. And what you do is you advise your clients to make sure that your portfolio is diverse, especially in this time, right? With the with the pandemic behind us and the crazy things going on in the world, I can imagine that's a good advice. It, it is good advice. You should always diversify. Portfolio investment 
diversification is has been a staple of Wall Street. The financial industry knows yeah. very well yeah. to diversify. Yeah. I mean, that's its core premise. And it's the same with any any business segment, whether it's luxury or straight business. You should yeah. always diversify, whether you own hedge funds and or mutual funds, whether you own artwork or real estate. You don't want to own put all of your money into only yeah. real estate or that, all of your money into only art. Did that statement get stronger after the after Corona? I can imagine with Corona, the market was, you know, like crazy. Um, and uh, some some industries, so, you know, collapsed altogether. You know, some mm-hmm. markets not even me there. You know, aviation, one of them is, of course, the, the business jets and, and the private planes. That was a market who are really changed with the right. pandemic and, and the Corona, right? So well, can, well, you that's tell me, can you tell me a little bit about that before and after Corona kind of thing with in your advice to your clients? What changed? What 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 is different now um, than before the pandemic? Um, I mean, a lot of things, not only in terms of diversification, but let's say real estate wise, we in New York City, it used to be the Sunday tradition to go out and visit the open houses. And you would go into an apartment, a condominium or a co-op that was for sale, and you would attend the open house and there would be music and the apartment would be staged and it would be a beautiful Sunday afternoon thing. And that stopped during the pandemic because we weren't allowed to show real estate in in New York during the pandemic. And then post-pandemic, what has changed is that open houses came back, but they're now by appointment, many of them. So it's no longer, in fact, open. It's no longer open. It's open house by appointment. And there's also become a reliance on technology in the real estate world. So you have virtual showings, you have video showings, you have what is, I think, an over-reliance on lockboxes. So you, you send a client with their agent to the property and you yourself don't even go. So you know, if you're a listing really, agent. That's so a, things have changed quite a bit in real yeah, estate. I can imagine. I actually had a, we had a guest uh, a, a while ago. Her name was Diane Schick. And she had a global online platform of buying and selling boats. And mm. I said, you know, I, I would never buy a boat. For, I mean, we're talking about 200,000, 1 million, 2 million. I mean, it's not that you know, it's not clothes. I, I would more than happy buy clothes in, in China, but I would not go for the boat. <laughs> that right, far. right. So, not sight yeah. unseen, not sight unseen, but a lot. that's yeah. something that is different. Um, you know, the open houses, people used to come and walk the property. And then during the pandemic and after, people began, became comfortable with buying properties sight unseen. Yeah. And, yeah. and they would be from a million dollars and up but they would yeah. want to come in and put money down on something to get out of their situations. So, right. and this includes getting out of New York. People were buying Florida properties that way to get out of New York. So yeah. things are different for sure. That was actually, we also saw here in Barcelona, in the city, we had a, I lived in the mountain at that time. And then everybody said, you can never sell that house because it's Corona. I said, maybe it's a good time to sell. And within a week, we had like 10 buyers all from the city said, we want to go out of the city. Uh, For sure. For sure. North of New York City, Westchester County was every bit as strong as Florida during the pandemic. And just after the pandemic, there were bidding wars for the for the least attractive, least aesthetically pleasing cabin in the Westchester woods. You know, you would have a bidding war for this property and the price would escalate. Wow, so, that's amazing. You know, it's amazing. Pandemic so, driven. If if I understand, because um, with with um, with the investments, I, can, I mean, your clients have portfolios and your clients want your advice in what's wise after Corona to have in my portfolio. You want to have them different things. So do you think um, real estate um, is still a good investment or are you saying, well, maybe maybe I would advise a little bit different these days to 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 invest or to have your portfolio? What's a market which is, you know, very stable saying, OK, you have to invest in that and, you know, for sure you get a return on your money? Um, I, I don't think real estate is. 
Uh, it, real estate is not something I would dissuade people from investing in. You know, you always want to have real estate in your portfolio. Real estate is, you know, historically it's a hedge against inflation and we're in inflation now. So the pandemic ended, now we have inflation and real estate yeah. is a strong hedge against inflation because real estate will always grow in value over the long term. Yeah. You know, it will have its ups and downs. It won't have its, it won't be as volatile as the stock market, certainly not as volatile as cryptocurrency. But it'll it'll have its ups and downs. But at the end of the day, with real estate, it will always appreciate. So right. I, I wouldn't talk people out of investing in real estate. The only thing I would advise is to diversify and think of things other than real estate, because in the short term, when there's a market correction or when there's a shutdown, like during pen, an event like the coronavirus. Then you're losing money in the short term. So what do you have in the short term? to sort of keep things af in afloat. And for example, if you owned a an aircraft in the short term during pa during the pandemic, if you owned an aircraft, you could make money renting that aircraft out because private aviation is one of the sectors that did not slow down during the pandemic. It actually accelerated. Nobody saw that coming, Michael. Nobody saw that coming. That that the private jet industry was growing actually was doing very well in that time. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to me, actually. Now, yeah. I, I actually, um, in our podcast, we were talking about how to invest after Corona. We were um, researching a sort of uh, some reports also about the trends of 2023. And uh, for all the topics they advised people to uh, invest in, um, I think the, the top four, I think, was all about cryptos and bitcoins, um, which which to me is is kind of a risk i thought but um the the advice from these kind of of agencies are actually to they they put them there as the best investment you can make so how what's your opinion about that is it risky right it's risky it's volatile it's volatile it, you know it's like stocks on steroids you know the yeah, stock market is very volatile you have to have a, the stomach you have to have a stomach for wall street Right. Yeah. And you also you certainly have to have a stomach for cryptocurrency because the yeah. prices are up and down. Look at what what has happened to Bitcoin in the last year. And um, and so you don't want to put all of your money into Bitcoin only. You don't want to put all of your money into Ethereum only. You can diversify within the cryptocurrency world as well. And that's in a way it's designed for that. That world is designed for yeah. diversification. Um, but certainly you don't want to take all of your money out of tangible tangible assets no. and put it all into digital currency. That would be a mistake. Are they be trusted? I, I I felt that in the whole Bitcoin industry and crypto industry, there are a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, um, agencies or people not to be trusted, to be honest. I had some weird stories about people just losing all the money. Sure. Um, it's gone. I mean, yeah, because it's unregulated. It, it you know at the end of the day and that's its appeal for a lot of people for different reasons you know but not all of them nefarious but there are nefarious reasons for preferring cryptocurrency because it's it's transparent and yet it's not transparent you know the money can evaporate like this ah, it, definitely. you know so do you have clients because for example if we go to the the nft you know the 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 which is also to me sort of a hype or trend. I don't know. I just I just feel that it's like a bubble of air which probably gonna collapse one, one day. Well but it is. What what you just said could be marketed as an NFT moment, in fact. Yeah, it's your sentence that you just said could be a moment in the NFT like, world and, and someone would come in and start bidding on that and, and drive the price up to upwards of two million dollars for the moment. Would it be something that you advise your client if they say, hey, you can buy this house or you can buy this art, um, but or I'm, I'm going to buy it from you, but I'm going to be paying you in cryptos or in bitcoins. Is that something you would do for your client or would you say, you know, what, I stay far away from that? <laughs> no, no. I, again, I wouldn't dissuade people from investing in crypto or using crypto to purchase a tangible asset because that that is a viable option. And it is, uh, you know, it, it, like I said, the whole world, the whole crypto industry is not nefarious. 
So there are real estate transactions, many of them. You know, Barnes in Miami just had a record breaking one, um, a property that was paid for in Ethereum, which is a cryptocurrency. And and at the end of the day, the seller of the property receives government backed currency, whether it's US dollar or euro. Uh, The benefit in using cryptocurrency is to the buyer. The yeah, person who's paying with the crypto. And, so and then it goes through the title com- in Florida. It goes through the title company. It's converted into U.S. dollars and the seller at the end of the day gets his asking price. So it, it's again, it's not I keep overusing the word nefarious. It's, it's not really the shady industry that it could appear to be. No, I it is valid. I do think, though, that a lot of uh, investors of people in our target group maybe some who are a little bit older i don't know but <laughs> that they they don't want to take the risk that they're going for the traditional kind of investments you know the art where you were talking about or the mm-hmm. gold you know so still well there is that there's that's true there there is a tradition tradition is everything i mean there are people who don't yeah. use social me- media because they prefer to meet in person there are people who prefer paying cash yeah, they don't they don't use credit course. cards they prefer yeah. using cash and the yeah. tradition you know, at the end, there's always going to be tradition, but the world is changing, as we know. The world is changing, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think so, too. Now, Michael, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, startups, people with small businesses, and um, questions that we get in, like, every week is that they like to see um, how we think of, they like to expand, they like to go global, international, so they want to be bigger. Um, but they all have a sort of fear because the world is so much changing. And I'm, for example, uh, you know, you know, I don't know how it is in United States, but here in Europe, the war in Ukraine is definitely mm-hmm. something that is infecting the market, is in infecting the economics. Um, do you have any tips for these young people, the the startups, uh, you know, starting now? How to de- how can they limit the risk? in this changing market you know like how can they limit the risk that they end up um with a market that um that disappears or that's going to be infected in all the things happening in the world sure sure well it, you know again it all goes back to diversification you know in the united states for example there are real estate agents who are becoming licensed in more than one state yeah. For example, yeah. I myself, I'm licensed in Florida, New York, and Colorado. Um, yeah. There are brokerage firms that are also not only New York based, but they're also working in Florida. They're also working in California. So it's diversification. So yeah. the first thing I would say to to people coming up is, the first thing I would say is don't be afraid. Lose the fear. There shouldn't be fear. Fear is the word that you don't yes. want to hold you back ever. Um, so beyond that, I, I would say that you need to diversify. So whatever your sec- business sector is, um, have a second business sector that you move forward on as well. You know, have a side hustle and, and work so, on that as well. Yeah, right. Because I think diver- diversity, I mean, I, I like I like the topic in this podcast about that. I can also imagine that you do this in a smaller form, but then in your company. So maybe you're going to have other products on the side that may be easier to sell. or Maybe they are more willing to be be um, be sold. Um, mm-hmm. The product or even the way you do your marketing, the way you approach your client, the way you, um, you know, the, 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 the way your company grows. I think there are many ways maybe. Uh, so what we are looking to is is diversity in all susp in all topics right in, 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 inside of the business segment as well so not only having yeah. a side hustle a separate business that you can go to and, and develop and yeah. build your skill set but also within your core business offer an array of services offer a, that's good a, a synergistic array of services that complement each other and that's yeah. a way to stay afloat yeah, that's a good advice, I think, because a lot of people I see, especially startups, they they intend to to have this one product and they keep going for that only one product and that one market and, and one idea. And I think that's where they, after a while, they get stuck and say, hey, it's not working. Well, it could be working if you're going to 
um, you know, see a little bit different Pass angles. that a little wider, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, a yeah. lot of, I think, you know, separately, a lot of mistakes startups make are requiring the registration immediately when you visit the website or immediately when you download the app. And it's just, I, I would say, let it be, a, again, the world's changing, I get it, but let it be a little more organic. Let people know more about your business, learn about your business before you demand that they input their information. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I could, it could be that not everybody have that time or not everybody have that possibility because they are focusing on that small business they have and, and keep focusing on that. But I think it's good advice to see, you know, stand back a little bit, give it some, some time and some space to, uh, to develop. Um, yeah, I think that, you know, that's something you probably get from experience. If you are uh, an entrepreneur for, for many years, you will find out that that might be a good idea to do. So for all the startups here listening, listen to that. So if you want to know more of these um, business for Michael, you can always go to his page on our website and see what he's doing. Go in, in touch with him. We have his website in there. Um just one more question. I was actually wondering, because if people want to find you, uh, Michael, I have the feeling that you work for very big clients, you know, people with a big portfolio and, and who are having the possibilities to having lots of different industries in there. Are you also available for smaller businesses, for for uh, consults or for... Of course, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. I'm, not, I'm open for business. You know, and I the focus is on luxury real estate, for example. But if you're looking to rent an apartment in New York City, yeah, you know, absolutely reach out. If you're looking to make a smaller investment move or you have a small business you want to discuss, you know, it's not the world does not revolve around yachts and jets. It'd be nice if it did, but it, it doesn't. So, you no, know, we're I open for business and by all means, reach out. And I also think that the 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 joy for me uh, to be an entrepreneur and to to grow the business is to grow together. So if we I'm I'm working with a lot of partners and entrepreneurs, uh, um, and it's so much fun to to advise each other and grow together, and then be successful at the end, be successful together. So right. all these startups, all the small um, the small businesses, who, they can reach out and see what you can do for him for for them and um yeah i would uh, i would definitely see some uh, listeners would uh, reach out to you that would be nice so thank you very much michael for being here and uh, i actually think that with all the topics we're going to have in our next podcast and the people around i think maybe in 2023 there will be probably another one where i think that uh, that i will invite you and say hey Maybe I need the advice of Michael again. Um, so, but for now, thank you for this time and thank you for giving all the information about um, um, wealth management and all the, the industries you're working on. For all people in, um, here, if you want to have something, you know, you want to say or question, don't hesitate to um, to approach us. And our email is podcast at europeanlifemedia.com. If you want to have more information about podcasts coming up or listen to other podcasts we already did, go to europeanlifemedia.com and see our podcast we already did. There are a lot of very great uh, entrepreneurs there and very interesting to hear their story and hear their advice. And that's where we for. So, um, and Michael's podcast will be there, of course, also. So, Michael, thank you very much for your um, for your inspirational talk about markets, about um, investing, and um, about the world after COVID. And um, thank you, Bernadette. Thank, you, thank you for having me. Thanks so much. So everybody, um, it's Friday again. I uh, hope you uh, all enjoyed this podcast. I did anyway, and uh, I wish everybody a very happy weekend. And uh, join us next week. We will have a review for my visit to um, Salon Nautico in Barcelona, which I uh, enjoy. And um, I will take you with me to this um, to this beautiful trade show in, uh, in the heart of Barcelona. And for now, I wish you a great weekend and uh, talk to you later. Bye. Thank you for listening today. Please subscribe and share this podcast. Do you have a question or a story to share? Please find us at podcast at europeanlifemedia.com.